Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ bless. Let me know how the sound is. Let me know if y'all can hear me loud and clearly. Say something, speak so they can oh, hear you. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Can y'all hear him saying mic check? Mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Just, just say shalom, good morning. Shalom. Can y'all hear me? Good morning. Can you hear me? Shalom, can you hear me? Good morning. Okay, can y'all hear him? <laughs> He's doing mic checks without a mic. <laughs> like a 15 second delay from us to the that's right sister don't let Satan take you down he out here he busy he is busy Hey, shalom. Hey, we're going to get started after this song. We'll play this song while people coming in, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Go hold it tight, yeah. With all your might, yeah. Don't give up. Don't use some 
system. Don't lose your mind. Yeah. Yeah. We all do fine if we hold that line. Yeah. Hold that line. Yeah. So I will just hold that line. Yeah. Hold that line. Yeah. Don't let go. Hold it tight. Yeah. With all your might. Yeah. Don't give up. Don't use some wisdom. Yeah. Don't lose your mind. Yeah. We all do fine if we hold that line. Yeah. Hold that line. I'ma hold the line. Yeah. Praise to the Most High. We're going to rise and face Jerusalem. Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come before you, Lord, on this day, praising thy holy name, Heavenly Father, praising the name of thy Son, Heavenly Father, for all the things that ye have done for us, Heavenly Father, for you have given us the power and the spirit to endure in this captivity, Heavenly Father, to wake up our people, Heavenly Father, to be a vessel unto thy glory, Heavenly Father, that they may see our good works and glorify you, Heavenly Father, for we seek not our own glory, Heavenly Father, but for thine glory, Heavenly Father. We ask that you watch over all the men that are traveling from the Blitz, Heavenly Father, for the great work that we put in out here in New Orleans, Heavenly Father. We ask that you watch over those men and bring the men home safely to their families, Heavenly Father. We ask that you watch over all over the men and women of the congregation, Heavenly Father, and keep them whole, Heavenly Father, spiritually, physically, Heavenly Father, in their health, Heavenly Father. Keep them whole. We ask all these things in the name of our Son, Jesus Christ, our Mark. All oh, praises. Hey, I got my brother with me. So I can see. Hello. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. Let's get right into it. This morning, it's, uh, it's Sunday morning, and I am in the spirit of uh, whipping in these passes backside. Kicking, uh, we're going to kick it off with uh, uh, 1 John 4 and 1. 1 John 4 and 1. If there's ever a time where y'all can't hear me or him, just put it in the comment board. All right, I'm going to be watching the comment boards. Yeah. All right, let's go. The book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, mm -hmm. but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. It says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Go to Jeremiah 29 and 8. Yeah, Jeremiah 29, verse 8. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, and verse 8. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. Go ahead. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. Mm -hmm. I have not sent them, said the Lord. So even... Jump, read on. For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you. So what did you have? When we was in Babylon, serving our captivity out in Babylon, which we back in Babylon again, Babylon, mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. This is what we are here in America, right? But even back during the time when we was in captivity in ancient Babylon, there were false prophets established teaching our people falsehood, lies, madness. Right, jump back up, jump up to verse four. Jump up to verse four. Verse four. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, mm -hmm. unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Right, so we were carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon, read. Build ye houses. So it says build, once you get there into that captivity in Babylon, the commandment was to build houses. Build ye houses, read. And dwell in them. And dwell in them. And plant gardens. And do what? And eat the fruit of them. And eat the fruit of the gardens that you plant. Go ahead. Take ye wives. Uh huh. And beget sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And take wives for your sons. Mm -hmm. And give your daughters to husbands. 
that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye be that ye may be increased there and not diminished. See, our people think just because we're here in America and you can build houses, buy houses, you 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 marry your daughter off and you go to a wedding, you have a good old time, you got your garden in the backyard, you able to build things and accumulate things here in this in this kingdom, you think that you're not in captivity. You think that you're not a slave. But this is this is the things that we did in the Babylonian captivity. We had certain liberties to go out and build houses and do certain things, but we were still slaves under that kingdom. We still were captives under that kingdom. The same way that we have certain liberties, you can go get your burger when you want to, go get some pizza, whatever you want to do. You know, you want to go to the skating rink, you want to go to the movies. Hell, you want to go to Bourbon Street and uh, drop it like it's hot. You still in captivity. You still in the land of your captivity, no matter what other liberties you got. All right, go ahead. Verse seven. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captive. Just because you can do these things doesn't mean you're not a captive. Doesn't mean you're not a slave. Read. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Come on. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. See, the thing that hath been is that which shall be. So just like we had diviners and false prophets that was in the midst of us in ancient Babylon, we have the same thing here in this Babylon, okay? Christ told us that we would have, that many false prophets would come. Give me that in Matthew 24, verse 24. Remember, it says, don't hearken unto these prophets, okay? Matthew 24 and 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ. There shall arise false Christ. We ran into a false Christ last night. Here we are out teaching the gospel on uh, um, at the Essence Fest and on, uh, what was we on? Bourbon Street? Street yeah. No, nah, was, what was the street we was on for, uh, before that? Oh, man, I don't know that one. Y'all brothers know yeah. what? Huh? We was on Canal Street, right? We was on Canal Street bringing the word out. And it's a it's a dude walking around talking about he's Jesus. He said he's Jesus. And he got followers. They drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> they drank the Kool-Aid, y'all. The, uh, the followers is talking about, yeah, how you know? How you know he ain't Jesus? And da -da 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 -da. This dude got tattoos. He's a weed smoker. But yet he's Jesus. I'll tell you, man. False Christ. Come on. For there shall arise false Christs mm -hmm. and false prophets. And false prophets, read. And shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. See, it was poss it would be so possible that they would deceive the very elect. But the reason why they won't deceive the very elect is because that God is rising up men in this earth to teach the truth of the gospel, to pull the elect from un off from under these false prophets. Many of these, many of these brothers that you see out teaching the Bible the correct way, okay, wearing the purple and the gold, out prophesying, we was once under a false prophet in the Christian church. Many of us came from the Christian church. But once we heard the word taught the right way, we said, oh, I got to get the hell up out of here. I'm not in the right place. <laughs> this don't resonate right with my spirit. I got to bounce. And we became more righteous men. We changed our lives according to the word of God and not according to what we learned under those false pastors. Give me 2 Peter 2 and 1. False, pop, false pop prophets. Another word for false prophet is a false preacher. A preacher teaching lies, heresies, heretics. All right. Second Peter's uh, 2 and 1. The book of Second Peter's chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh-huh. But there were false prophets also among the people. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. You see that? See, those false prophets are false teachers. They're false teachers. Read. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. See, these heresies that they teach, these aren't harmless teachings that they have. These are the these teachings will get you killed. These teachings will get you effed up. 
<laughs> I've seen I've seen pastors uh, not check fornication in the church, and it ends in it ends in murder. I've seen it end in murder. People will fornicate in the church and commit adultery, and the pastor won't check it and correct it. And then when such and such finds out that this dude is dealing with this with his wife, he'll he killed him. He killed the man. Because the pastors don't teach, don't commit adultery. They don't teach, don't uh, uh, commit fornication. Wonder why there's STDs in the, in the Christian church. Illegitimate children all up in the Christian church. Bunch of kids sprinkled around the church that look like the pastor. Mm. He got the same, he look just like pastor. <laughs> <laughs> right? Read on. Even denying the Lord that brought them. You know how they deny, deny the Lord that brought them? They'll say, oh, color don't matter. It don't matter what Jesus look like. Oh, uh, Jesus could be purple. Jesus could be green. It doesn't matter. He loves us all. These are the heresies that they bring in denying Christ. How do they also deny Christ? By denying his teachings. By denying what Christ taught, saying he's only for the 12 tribes of Israel. He came not to uh, destroy the law and the prophets. They, just, they say, nope, 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 nope. That Old Testament, throw that Old Testament away, rip the book in half, and only read the New Testament. Only read Paul's writings. <laughs> Come on. Even denying the Lord that brought them. They deny Christ's teachings. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. Because the destruction will come upon them, read. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Yeah, pernicious ways. So many going to follow their wicked ways. That's why you see a lot of people flocking to these churches. Why? Because it's a smooth message. It's a smooth level, uh, uh, mode of preaching. And it's, it's, it caters to your emotions. It doesn't cater to your spirit and what you need to grow and what you need to learn and what you need to do to be saved. It's tailored towards your emotions, stroking your ego, making you feel good, motivating you to go out and be just as wicked as you can be and feel comfortable. That's what it's all about. Read. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You see that? By reason of, uh, uh, by reason where the truth shall be evil spoken of. See, the way of truth, keeping the Sabbath day, is going to be evil spoken of. Uh, stop eating, when you stop eating pork, that's going to, you're going to be evil spoken of. When you stop celebrating Christmas and Halloween and Easter and all these foolish pagan holidays, you're going to be spoken evil of. They're going to speak evil. They're going to say, oh, he's crazy. Oh, she's in a cult. Oh, she lost her mind. Oh, there's no way that we're going to be, we can, we can let her come up in here again. Your family ostracize you and deal with you. Uh, don't want to deal with you no more. <laughs> because why? Because the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The way of truth is evil spoken of because this world is turned upside down. And the Israelites, we are here to turn it right side back up. Everything that's righteous in this world right now is evil. And everything that's evil in this world that's deemed as evil is righteous. You see all these Christian women mad that they can't kill their children anymore. Mm. They upset. They're mad because now that one they're irresponsible behind gets pregnant, they got to take care of the child. So now, not being able to kill your baby and terminate your pregnancy is evil spoken of. The way of truth is evil spoken of. Read. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. That's why these pastors coming out... Uh, um, uh, like Creflo saying, because this is talking about how they, how they get money out of you with tithes. Creflo coming out saying, well, I was wrong about tithes. But I'm not going to apologize for it. Because if he apologized for it, that means he got to give up some money back. He got to get some money. He got to issue out some refunds. He got to go through all them tithing statements and return the people's money. And he got the money. He got it. But he ain't going to give it back. You know why he ain't going to give it back? Because he's a covetous man seeking to make merchandise of the people. 
evil. Read it again. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. You know what the feigned words is? They'll say, will a man rob God? When that ain't what that scripture meant. They'll say tithes is money. When that ain't what that means. These are feigned words. These are false doctrines. This is false teaching. Feigned words. Read. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. Mm -hmm. And their damnation slumbereth not. Right. So their, their destruction slumbereth not. Give me Ezekiel 22. Their judgment is coming. See, a lot of these preachers, they think they're good because they have made lies their refuge. They're hidden under deceit. They think nobody see they evil. But we pulling the, we ripping the skirt off of Christianity and all their lies in the black church. That's why Bishop had the spirit of God on him when he told us to go out in front of these churches and teach the gospel. Bring the gospel to our people in these Christian churches on Sundays. And since we've done this, people have been, uh, uh, the Christian church has been exposed for the evil, wicked people they are. And the, and the, and the elect among our people that's in them churches, they're going to come out. We're going to pull them out and we're going to clean them up and uh, thus saith the Lord in righteousness. But the wicked, they're going to get exposed. They're going to get exposed. Their, their uh, unlawful agendas are going to be exposed. Read that, verse 25. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, and verse 25. Right, Ezekiel 22 uh, and 25. Go ahead. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. There is a conspiracy of the prophets in the midst thereof. See, Ezekiel was in Babylon. Uh, in Babylon, the same scripture that we, that we uh, were reading in Jeremiah earlier, where it says there was false prophets among those people then, when we was in captivity in Babylon, Ezekiel is dealing with the same types of false prophets at the same time period. Okay, read that again. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. There's a conspiracy of the prophets in the midst thereof. Read. Like a roaring lion mm -hmm. ravening the prey. They're like roaring lions ravening the prey. Who's the prey? Our people. Our people who sincerely want to seek after God. They get caught up with these dudes. They get caught up with these false preachers. Read. They have devoured souls. Mm -hmm. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Read. Her priests have violated my law. You see that? That's the number one sign for a false prophet. Read that part again. Her priests have violated my law. See, these false prophets, these prophets have done what? They have violated God's law. That's the number one sign because all throughout the Bible, the men of God that were the righteous preachers and teachers, they advocated for the keeping of God's laws and commandments. They kept the laws and commandments of God and they advocated for the keeping of the laws and the commandments of God. They taught correction. They taught, they brought the correction from God's laws to heal the minds of the people. All the way from Noah, all to Moses, to, to Joshua, to Jeremiah, Isaiah, Elijah, uh, uh, Malachi, all the way up to Jesus to Christ, onto the twelve apostles, okay, and the rest of the other and the rest of the other apostles that came after, right? They all taught the laws of God. They all kept the laws of God. But what you'll find in false prophets is they what? Read that part again, verse twenty-six. Her priests have violated my law. See, these priests will violate God's law. Read. And have profaned my holy things. And they will profane God's holy things. The things that are holy in the Bible, they'll say, oh, no, 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 we don't have to do that no more. Don't do that no more. Don't, don't read that no more. The, 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 the Old Testament, no, 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 no. That's done away with. Read. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. You see, they have put no difference in between the holy and the profane. Everything's blurred. They've meshed in biblical principles with the with the rest of the world, with the world. They've made no difference between the worldly uh worldly things and the things of 
uh, the Bible. They mesh it all in. So they'll say, oh, this is Jesus' birthday, but also Santa Claus is going to come and give you gifts. Mm. They've made no difference between the cleaner. Are, are we dealing with Christ or are we dealing with Santa Claus? Right. They'll say, oh, well, this is Jesus' resurrection, but uh, we're going to let the kids do Easter egg hunts outside. Hold up. Are we dealing with bunny eggs <laughs> or are we dealing with Christ? See, the Christian pastors, they put no difference between the two. They put no difference between the two. This is why we outside the church now. This is why we outside the church now applying much pressure. And they don't like that thing because they can't answer these questions without looking like a fool. Many of these pastors, the, in the I'm talking about the ones that are not sincere. The, you pastors that are sincere... You're going to hear this word and you're going to say, oh, wow, I need to uh, readjust my my approach and my teaching. I need to change my ways. But many of you pastors that are uh, not sincere and ordained to be false prophets, you're going to duck. You're going to dodge. You're going to do all manner of things to try to avoid us because you know that once you stand face to face with us in these scriptures, your doctrine can't stand up against the true word of God. The doctrine that you have come up with, the feigned words that you put together in your theologian schools, that you learned from the slave master, your, your master, you learned from him, it ain't going to stand up against the real true teachings of Christ. And that's why you buckle and you hide. Come on. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Read. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. That's why they say, oh, you can eat pork. There's no scripture in the New Testament saying that you can eat pork now, but they will find scriptures to twist and say, oh, it says you can eat all things. Okay, well, go eat uh, a, a dead man's foot. Go eat that then. No, you won't eat that because you know that's not lawful to eat another man's foot. You can't eat another person. But... You'll say all creatures is good uh, and none, nothing to be received without the proper context. And you'll say, oh, you can eat pork now. And now you having, uh, now you celebrating Thanksgiving, the slaughter of the Native American Indians, okay? You celebrating that and praying over unlawful food. And you mean to tell me that y'all worship God. It can't be, it, it, this can't be real. You have not put the, uh, put difference between the clean and the unclean. Is, is Christmas clean or is Christmas unclean? That's a question for your pastor. Is Easter clean or is Easter unclean? Thus saith the Lord. That's a question for your pastor. You see, is a woman wearing pants clean or is that unclean? Because God said that's an abomination. But what do you Christian pastors say who let women wear pants all up in your church? Come on. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. You see that? And that's another thing they do. They say, you know what? Nope. We don't want to do the Sabbath like Bishop taught yesterday. We don't want to do the Sabbath. What we want to do is we want to go to church on the first day of the week. We want to do the opposite of what God said. God said the seventh day, the last day of the week. No, we're going to do the first day of the week. We're going to do the first day of the week because it says what? They have done what? And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Because I'm going to hide my eyes from the Sabbath. They hid their eyes from the uh, Sabbath. They hid their eyes from the Passovers. They hid their eyes from the Day of Atonements. They hid their eyes from the days of the Feast of Pentecost. They hid their eyes from the Feast of the Lord, the Sabbaths of the Lord. That's what these preachers do. So how come there's such a stark uh, um, comparison among these wicked preachers today and the false prophets of old? Because these spirits are back on the earth again, fulfilling their duty, fulfilling what, they, what they've been called to do. They've been called to deceive and to be exposed. Okay, come on. And I am profaned among them. And God is profaned among them. But they'll say, oh, bless the Lord. Oh, this is the season. Oh, holy glory, we got favor. They'll say all that nonsense. But at the end of the day, 
They profane God's name because they don't teach the truth according to the gospel that our people might be saved. Okay, give me that about the profaning of the Sabbath. Show, show that Christ kept the Sabbath day. If we followers of Christ, we're supposed to walk how he walked like Peter told us. Give me Luke um, 4, 16. The book of Luke, chapter 4 and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his customs was. Now, as his custom was, I mean, this is what he was accustomed to. This is what he regularly did. Come on. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. How many of y'all step into the synagogue? On this? I'm talking to these children. I ain't talking to my um, godly brothers and sisters online who are uh, keeping the Sabbath day, who kept the Sabbath day yesterday. I'm talking to these Christians who are uh, going to church every Sunday uh, and ignoring God's Sabbath day. That's what I'm talking about. It says Christ's custom was to keep the Sabbath day. He went and fellowship on the Sabbath days. Why do these pastors not do that? Why do y'all reject the Sabbath day? The only commandment out of, of the Ten Commandments that says, remember. Why do y'all reject that? Why do y'all forget that? Why do y'all omit that? Because you are a false prophet. A false prophet. These are the signs of a false prophet. They're going to reject the laws of God. The Old Testament is done away with. Oh, we don't have to keep those old laws. Nobody can keep those laws. A bunch of a bunch of BS. Uh, they, will, they will put no difference between the clean and the unclean. Okay? It says they're going to uh, they turn their eyes away from the Sabbath. They ain't going to keep the Sabbath. Come on. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Then that, this is when this is when the people came to learn the scriptures on the Sabbath day. They came to the synagogues to learn the scriptures on the Sabbath days. So Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, his custom was to go into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and read the scriptures. Read on. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh -huh. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, yep. to preach deliverance to the captives, mm -hmm. and recovering of sight to the blind. You see that? And that's something that Christianity don't deal with. Right there. Christ said... The spirit of the Lord is on him and because he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor and to preach deliverance. That's the part I want to deal with. Preaching deliverance to the captives. How come in the Christian church, 20 years in the Christian church, for myself personally, how come I've never heard the issue of slavery brought up when it's all throughout the Bible? Why have I never heard about us uh, being delivered from our oppression? Us being delivered out of the ghettos and the slums. Us being delivered from being targeted by, uh, by unjust laws, by false cops, by uh, uh, crooked cops, pinning false charges on us, uh, being packed in prison houses. How come I've never heard a sermon addressing these issues that plague the black community? Because these guys are not sent of God. These dudes are not ordained of God. These dudes are sent to, to just get money off of you and keep you sleep, keep you docile, keep you lining the oppressor's pockets with money. Every holiday that come around, these Christians are flocking to celebrate it. It was Valentine's Day. Oh, well, now it's uh, Easter. Oh, well, now it's Fourth of July. Oh, Father's Day. Oh, Mother's Day. Oh, here comes uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, here comes Halloween. Oh, here comes Christmas. Oh, it's New Year's now. Oh, here we go. We're back at Valentine's Day. It's a big money thing. They're getting money out of you. And they're keeping you sleep. And they're keeping you in sin. Okay? Uh, deliverance to the captives. Give me Matthews 1. 1 and 1 real quick. 
Let's show, let's show the deliverance of the captives. Show the purpose of Christ. Because people don't understand in these churches that Christ came to deliver and to redeem his people from captivity. The book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 1. Yep. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. The son of David, the son of Abraham. Read. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. You see that? About the time they were carried away to Babylon. Why does it mention Israel being carried away into Babylon as captives in the genealogy of Christ? We're going to explain it. Read on. Verse 12. And after they were brought to Babylon... Jeconias begat Salatheel, and Salatheel begat Zerubbabel. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Mm -hmm. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. You see that? So for 14 generations after we came out of Babylon, we went into captivity after captivity after captivity. We went into the Greek captivity. Well, let me, let me put it in order for you. We went from the Babylonians captivity. Then we went to the Persian and Medio captivity. Okay. Then we went to the Greek captivity all the way up until the Roman captivity where uh, our people were during the book of Matthew. Okay. During the book of Matthew. Because watch this. Watch this. Give me Baruch. Um... Real quick, I didn't put this in my notes. Chapter 3, verse 8. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 8. Yep. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Right. Where thou hast scattered us Read. for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payment. And to be what? And to be subject to payment. So a characteristics of being a characteristic of being in captivity is that you would be subject unto payments. You would be subject unto payments. Now, let's see who we were subject to payments under in uh, the book of Matthew. Matthew 22 and 16. Showing you that we were in captivity during the time that Christ walked the earth. The book of Matthew chapter 22 and verse 16. Uh-huh. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians. 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 Mm -hmm. Saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God and truth. You got to be mindful when people come up to you and they start trying to flatter you with their tongue, flatter you with their speech. They about to say something disrespectful or something very, very stupid right after. It's almost, it's almost a hundred percent. After they say, man, you guys are teaching the truth, man. You guys are wise, man. You guys, man, I, I, I agree with everything you say. But <laughs> then they about, here comes the stupidity. Okay, here comes the disrespect. All right, read on. And neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Come on. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? So they asked Christ... Is it lawful to give tribute money unto Caesar? Read. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. Christ perceived what they were trying to do. Because at this time, we were under tribute and under captivity of the Romans. Under Caesar and the Romans. So if Christ would have said, no, you don't give, uh, you're not supposed to give tribute money unto Caesar, then they would have they would have apprehended Christ and arrested him for treason to speaking against Caesar. But if he would have said yes, uh, if he would have just flat out said yes, give Caesar the tribute money, uh, then they would have said, well, you regard man, you regard man, and you bow to Caesar. They would have they would have they no matter what you say, no matter what you would have said, either way you would have answered it. You would have been hemmed up by these wicked Pharisees because they tried to entangle Christ in his speech left and right. Read on. 
But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Read. Show me the tribute money. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. Read. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and, and subscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's. And unto God the things that are God's. You see that? Christ answered in a wise way. He said, Whose image is on this? Oh, it's Caesar's image? Well, give it to Caesar then. If it's Caesar's, if that's Caesar's money, give, give it unto Caesar. But make sure you give it unto God what belongs to God. Showing you that what? You have to be mindful how you deal with some of these people that try to trip you up in your words. And we went here to show that we were under the Roman captivity during the time of Christ walking the earth in the book of Matthew. Now go back to Matthew's 1. Go back to Matthew's 1 and read verse 17 again. The book of Matthew chapter 1 and verse 17. Uh -huh. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. Mm -hmm. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. Uh-huh. And now this is the purpose of Christ's birth. Read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Uh-huh. For he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people from their sins because their sins is what got them carried away into Babylon. Their sins is what got them carried away into Medio Persia. Their sins is what got them carried away into Greece. Their sins is what got them put under the Roman captivity. Our sins is what got us landed here, scattered throughout uh, the four corners of the earth, serving under Esau. Okay? Calling themselves Caucasian, French Caucasian, American Caucasian, British Caucasian, Spanish Caucasian. Okay? Now we're under now we're under them under these captivities because of our sin. But the purpose of Christ was to deliver us and to save us from our sins. Okay? Um Luke chapter 1. Luke 1:68. The book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Mhm. Mm Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Because, see, these false pastors and preachers, they don't want to deal with the God of Israel. Because then they got to acknowledge his people, the Israelites. Which those little phony people over there in Jerusalem today, they don't link up. They don't match up with Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, which was prophesied to be a sign. Get that real quick, Deuteronomy 28, read verse 46. Start at 45. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 45. So when you're dealing with the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, you got to keep these two verses in mind, in the forefront of your mind. Read. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and, over, and, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee. Till thou be destroyed, uh -huh. because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. Here we go, watch this. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. It says, these curses shall be upon thee for a sign. What does a sign do? A sign identifies something. It identifies something. So if I'm walking down the street and I see the golden arches, that's a sign to show me that that's McDonald's. Y'all need to stop eating McDonald's, <laughs> right? If I'm walking down the, the street and I see a sign that says Walmart, that's letting me know that there is a Walmart. Why did we need a sign to show us who we are? Why do we need a sign? Why would the curses need to be a sign to show who the children of Israel are, because read verse 37. 
Verse 37. Yes. And thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb, and a byword. Because one of the curses would be that we would become a, an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. A byword is becoming an African-American. A byword is a Hispanic. A byword is a Mexican. A byword is a Negro. A byword is a Jamaican. A byword is a Haitian. A byword is a Puerto Rican. A byword is a Dominican. Okay, these are bywords. These are bywords. These are not the original names that God gave us. So in order to cast off the byword, the proverbs and the bywords, we have to come to the sign of who we really are, which is the curses of written in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. But see, these preachers won't read Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. They don't want to read Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. Why? Because then they got to explain how uh, 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 they got to explain all of the things that we got to uh, abstain from coming out of slavery. They don't want to come out of slavery. They do not want to come out of slavery because why? They receive certain benefits here in this captivity. They don't want to grind and put in the work that it takes to be revolutionary. They want to they want to suck from the dragon's breast. That's what they want to do. Okay? Go back to that Luke where we was at. Luke 168. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Uh -huh. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. The Israelites are you blacks, Hispanics, you Native American Indians. The ones who fit the curses written in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The curses of Deuteronomy 28th chapter are a sign to identify the Israelites. Because the Israelites would lose their nationality. They would lose their identity through slavery. Come on. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Because even when you read Jeremiah 17 verse 4, it says we would lose our heritage. Did we lose our heritage during the time of Jeremiah? No, we still knew we was Israelites. We still knew who we were. But now today, in this time, uh, uh, I heard a big black, loud mouth, dumb, dumb young black woman last night say, I'll tell you, man, black women, y'all, y'all got, y'all, 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 y'all have nothing to say. Y'all have raised the most uh, ridiculous, uh, uh, it's, it's almost satire, the way that our women are, how stupid these women are. Um, these black women in the world I'm talking about. She said, he gonna ask me what's my nationality. I'm African-American. The hell wrong with him? Like, she was so prideful in being an African-American, she don't know how stupid she sounds. African-American is a new term. <laughs> That's a new terminology. African-American ain't even 200 years old. Our people are stupid. But she's out there dressed like a harlot. The type of harlot. She's loud. She's clamorous. She don't know nothing. And she just yep, 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 run her mouth and got these big stupid eyelashes, Right? These big, stupid eyelashes. I'm telling you, man, with the weave, just, man, you see those type of women, brothers, run the other way. They will destroy your life. They will deliver you up to the white man in child support court. <laughs> hey, because that's a judgment. You know, that's a judgment for fornication. You know, the Lord said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's a judgment. You get judged. You get judged with a wicked baby mama because you brothers don't know how to uh, deal right. <laughs> Your two brothers-in-law are both pastors and they don't know the Bible. That's not shocking. That's not front-page news. That's not shocking. These pastors are full of it. They 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 BSing. All right, where we at? Uh, verse sixty-nine. Come on. And has raised up in horn of salvation. For us in the house of his servant David. Right. African American ain't even 40 years old. Ain't even 40 years old. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. That, which have been since the world began. That we shall be saved from our enemies. You see that? It has been prophesied from the beginning. From the beginning. 
that we would be saved from our enemies. These false prophets ain't teaching nothing about being saved from nobody's enemy. You ask these Christians, who's the enemy? They're going to say, Satan, the spiritual demon, Satan. Like we ain't been getting our asses kicked for 400 years. Like we ain't like like we ain't got uh, Emmett Till's and and uh, Tamir Rice's and uh, um, all of these uh, young brothers who've been slaughtered. Uh, I'm talking about young men slaughtered at the hands of these folks, uh, lynched on trees, suffered slavery, suffered uh, the black codes, suffered Jim Crow, suffered segregation suffered through them destroying our communities and neighborhoods that we have been, uh, that we built to establish during segregation. And they destroyed them all, put them underwater, flooded them out and put them underwater. And now it's a lake where white folks go to have fun. They go have a little fun at the lake that where a black town used to be. Bombing our, bombing our cities and our establishments that we built. Because they want us to 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 uh, have a need to use them, to live off of them, to support their their economy. They ain't gonna let you have your own up in this thing. They don't. You think they're gonna let? You think they're gonna let the LeBron Jameses and the uh, the, the Jay Zs and all these people go out and be free? No, them dudes are slaves. They serve this country. They serve this country. They bring revenue to this country. But see, these pastors, they don't want to deal with that. They don't want to deal with being delivered from the enemy because the enemy is who feeds them, who allows them to get rich off preaching a false gospel. In God's kingdom, you'll never get rich off of preaching a go uh, false gospel. Your ass will get put to death. Read. Verse 70, mm -hmm. as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Come on. Which have been since the world began. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. Who hates us? These wicked false prophets, they won't, they won't expose who hates us. They will not teach about who hates our people. Read. To perform the mercy promised to our father. To perform, see, Christ was sent to perform the mercy that was promised to our fathers. Read. And to remember his holy covenant. Read. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. What's the oath that God swore unto our father Abraham? Go to Genesis 22. We're coming back to that Luke. We're going to finish that. Give me Genesis 22. Hold up. I didn't put this in my notes. Uh, Genesis 22 and start at verse 17. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 17. Yeah. That in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Mm -hmm. And as the sand, which is upon the seashore. Mm -hmm. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. You see that? That's us overcoming our enemies. That's a promise that was given unto Abraham that we would rule over our enemies. Now, hold on now. These Christians say, they, oh, I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. Oh, I believe, so I'm a child of Abraham. So who are the enemies that you're going to possess? Is that talking about the spiritual demon Satan too? Or are you a big fat liar? You see, these pastors, they full of it. This is why they don't want you to go into the Old Testament because now you got to start putting you got to start putting something real behind this stuff that they've been saying. When you the Bible starts talking about enemies, you got to put somebody's face behind that enemy. You can't pin up the spiritual demon Satan. You can't pin up the spiritual demon Satan and see this is the enemy who we're going to possess. No. It's talking about the Caucasian race. It's talking about those who put us in slavery, the ones who lynched our foremothers, who uh, lynched our forefathers, who raped our foremothers, who raped our forefathers. You better understand what type of book this is. This is the same book that Nat Turner used to, to cause a slave rebellion. 
This ain't that kind of book that you just sit up and read and say, holla glory, thank you Jesus, with your big ugly church hat. This ain't that type of book. This ain't the type of book that you read and you just sit back and do nothing. This is a revolutionary book. This book is about action. But everything is mysticized and fantasized and romanticized in the Christian church. Go back to where we was at. Matter of fact, keep reading. Keep reading. Give me verse 18. Verse 18. And in thy seed. Talking shall, about in Christ. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So you know it's not talking about all nations being blessed as in all nations of the earth being blessed. Because what about the enemies that's going to be possessed? What about them? It's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel that would be scattered throughout all nations of the earth. The reason why Christ would have to come and redeem them. Christ coming to redeem them and save them from their sins. That's the blessing. That's the blessing. Come on. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Because Abraham was obedient unto the most high. That's why. Okay. These pastors, they don't know nothing about obedience. Go back to what we was at in Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 72. Yeah. To perform the mercy promised to our father. Read. And to remember his holy covenant. And to remember his holy covenant. See, the holy covenant was promised to the children of Abraham. Paul clears it up. Not unto Ishmael, but through Isaac. Not through uh, Esau, but through Isaac unto Jacob. These are the, these are the children of God. Anybody that comes outside of that are not the children of God. So the covenant promised to their fathers is referring to the Israelites, those who fit the curses that identify them in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, 15 on down. But when we bring this out, these pastors, they run from it. You know why they run from it and they don't deal with that? Because they know they can't refute it. And in their pride... They can never change the way that they've been teaching. They can never change and adapt. But when the pressure, when the pressure starts getting applied, them doctrines start changing. Creflo talking about, well, now tithing isn't money. Okay, tithing is dealing with tithing is dealing with uh, crops and herds and flocks and stuff like that. Now he want to come out and say, well, we've been teaching for years. We've been we've been lighting his ass up on uh, online. He know what's up. He know what's up. So now he see that it's getting hot. He said, okay, I better start making some adjustments. I better start making some ad uh, adaptations because if I don't, I'm going to be looking real stupid here in a minute. But he never apologized for taking them people money. He never said he going to give them money back. He's still going to continue to collect their money. He's just going to put it under a different name. Okay. Um... What verse you at? Uh, verse 73. Read. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, mm -hmm. that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. Right, might serve him without fear. Come on. In holiness and righteousness before him. And that's the goal. We are supposed to uh, 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 attain unto holiness and righteousness. We can't attain up to holiness and righteousness in the Christian church. They violate the law. They make no difference between the clean and the unclean. They put no difference between the profane and the holy. They don't, they, they violate the, they turn their eyes away from the Sabbaths. How are we supposed to become holy when they doing all of that in the Christian church and negating every commandment in the Bible? Talking about the Old Testament is done away with. You can't even understand what the New Testament is saying without referencing the Old Testament where they were getting their writings from. Paul, Peter, Christ, uh, uh, um, Ananias, Luke, Matthew, the, all of the disciples, they all taught from the Old Testament. John the Baptist, they taught from the Old Testament because there was no New Testament for them to teach from. It had yet to be written during their lives. So they were teaching strictly from the Old Testament. But yet these wicked Christian pastors want to say don't read the Old Testament. That's another lie. All right. Give me, um, go to 1 John 4 verse 1. 
Read that again. This is where we started the class out. The book of 1 John, chapter 4, and verse 1. Uh huh. Beloved, believe not every spirit. So you can't believe every spirit. Everybody that's holding the Bible, you can't believe them. Everybody that used the name Jesus, you just can't believe them right off the bat. Come on. But try the spirit. But you have to try that spirit. How do you try that spirit? Watch this. Acts 17, verse 10. The book of Acts, chapter 17, and verse 10. Read. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Ber Berea, mm -hmm. who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So they went into the synagogue of the Jews in Berea. Read. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. These Jews were more noble than the Jews that were in Thessalonica because in Thessalonica, them Jews was raising up hell against the apostles. Come on. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. You see that? That's what made them noble. They was ready to hear the word. And not just hear only. What else? And search the scriptures daily. Uh-huh. Whether those things were so. And that's how you try the spirit. When people come to you talking about Jesus, you need to open your Bible and make sure that what they're teaching is thus saith the Lord. You need to make sure that what they're teaching is written in the scriptures, not just their own vain opinion. Read that, read that verse again. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica uh -huh. in that they received the word with all readiness of mind mm -hmm. and searched the scriptures daily. Whether those things were so. See, a lot of these Christian churches wouldn't even stand if these people was doing that in these churches. After the pastor get up there and run his mouth and they go and search the scriptures to see what he was saying was true or what she was saying is true. Because you got female pastors out there too, out of order, out of daggone order. A lot of these Christian churches would be crumbling. But see, our people in the Christian church, they docile, they don't read, they don't study, and they, they're like sheep. Our people are sheep. They just follow anything. Okay, so you got to search to see if those things are so. John 5, 39. John 5, 39. and verse 39. Come on. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. It says, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Search the scriptures. That means study. Precept upon precept. Look up the definitions. Look up the historical context. Get into the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Because in these scriptures, the sal your salvation lies. But some of y'all are going to miss your salvation because you uh, neglect to open your Bible. You neglect to read. You neglect to study. So when these heresies come, you're going to get swept away. How the hell brothers get swept away when people t uh, came talking about the Sabbath begins when the sun goes up. That dumbass doctrine didn't even last a year. That dumb, that was the dumbest doctrine. And brothers was confounded on that thing too. Said, I'm leaving. I, I got to get out of here, man. This is, you know, the Sabbath don't even start. I, I don't believe in the Sabbath starting at night anymore. Good riddance. <laughs> Good riddance. Now, them same dudes ain't keeping the Sabbath at all no more. They cooking on the Sabbaths, smoking weed on the Sabbaths. <laughs> they just said to hell with the Sabbath altogether because it was never in your spirit to be uh, sincere to the word of God. You a man pleaser. You a follower of men, just like our people in these Christian churches. So if you walk through these doors, if you leave that Christian church and walk through these doors and you don't come sincere and study to show yourself approved, you're going to follow after another false prophet, another false prophet. And he might wear fringes this time. He's going to come and he's going to uh, deceive you. He's going to come and trick you. He's going to pull you out the spirit. And then you're going to be smoking weed and smoking turkey on the Sabbath. <laughs> smoking turkey legs and smoking weed. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Read. And they are they which testify of me. Because all throughout the Bible, it testifies of Christ. It's, the volume of the book is written of Christ. From the beginning all the way to the end, he's found there. All right. Give me that in John 7, 38. book of John chapter 7 and verse 38 mm -hmm. he that believeth on me as the scripture had said uh -huh. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water see we have to believe on Christ as the scripture have said when you see that white image of Jesus that ain't as the scripture have said when you see Christmas that ain't as the scripture have said when you see Easter bunny eggs that ain't as the scripture have said when you see these women wearing pants that ain't as the scripture have said. When you see the pastor collecting tithes, that ain't as the scripture have said. Read that scripture again. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. As the scripture hath said. Search the scriptures. Just like those brothers and sisters that was in uh, Berea. They searched the scriptures to see whether those things were so because they they took their salvation serious. A lot of people don't take their salvation serious. A lot of these fake, mm, excuse my language. A lot of these fake Christians <laughs> don't even read the Bible. They so dumb, you, they don't know nothing. I'd be shocked. When a Christian actually has a scripture they want to uh, challenge us with. I'd be like, oh, you have a scripture. Outside of John 3.16 and Galatians 3.28, you have a different scripture than those? Wow! I'm shocked. Because these people don't read nothing. They don't study. They are dumb as an ox and an ass. <laughs> okay? Read that scripture again. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So we have to read the scriptures and follow as it is written, as the scripture have said. <laughs> as the scripture have said, give me Proverbs 8, uh, 18 and 4, going into the belly. Um, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What's that living water? The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 4. Come on. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. Read. And the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. See, that belly of living water is going to be the wisdom that comes from you. That wisdom. The wisdom that's going to sustain you. That wisdom that's going to get you the kingdom of heaven. That wisdom that's going to keep you away from sin. That wisdom that's going to keep you away from... Uh, uh, um, uh, all stumbling blocks out here The wisdom that's going to keep you away from false doctrine The wisdom that's going to keep you away from false preachers The wisdom that's going to sh uh, shield you from false brothers And show you what to do when these things arise See brothers don't, brothers, brothers don't believe in the Lord as the scripture have said So whenever these things arise You get taken out You don't have the wisdom You don't have the wisdom to endure you don't have the wisdom to know how to react. Talking about the Sabbath begins when the sun come up. That doctrine died as fast as it came. <laughs> that doctrine died as fast as it came. Came and went. The Sabbath begins when the sun comes up. Ark. By the time the sun went down, that doctrine was destroyed. Brothers is falling all out. It's because you never believed in the Lord as the scripture have said to begin with. I don't know why I'm reminded of that doctrine. Ain't nobody even talking about that doctrine no more. That doctrine is old. It's been dead. <laughs> Anyways, uh, read that verse one more time. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, mm -hmm. and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. And that wellspring of wisdom is as a flowing brook. Your wisdom should flow like water. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water that's the wisdom that cometh from god from the being obedience from the obedience to his commandments okay give me that ah oh, here go here goes here goes a brother right here that thinks he knows something too it says uh where's his where's his um what's his comment 
I wish brother people can open their eyes and come together in owning their own business. Listen, owning their, owning our own business does nothing if we don't have um, our right mindset. Okay, if we not in the right mind, owning our own business does nothing. Give me Isaiah 52, verse 3. Owning our own businesses does nothing. Like like Zion said, economics is not the way. All right, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 52 and verse 3. Uh -huh. For thus said the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for not. Thus saith the Lord, you sold yourself for not. Go ahead. And ye shall be redeemed without money. God said we're going to be redeemed without money. It ain't reparations. It ain't businesses. It ain't group economics. It ain't none of that stuff. What it is, is, what it is, is, it's repentance. Repentance is the most revolutionary act you can do. The changing of the mindset. The changing of the mindset. Learning to love the Lord thy God and follow all his commandments. Learning to love your brother, love your sister, and not transgress against them. These are the things that we fail to do in the community. These are the things that we fail to do. So if I don't love my neighbor, if I don't love my brother as I love myself and we go into business, I'm a shyst him. I'm a steal from him. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a do him bad. I'm a do him bad in the business. The business is going to fall apart because I'm going to abuse him and misuse him. I'm going to try to get over on him. You see? So dealing with uh, economics and dealing with uh, reparation and all that type of stuff, that stuff is not going to save us. What's going to save us is pre the preaching of repentance, the believing and repenting in the word of God. That's what's going to deliver us. That's what's going to save us because the Lord is waiting for 144,000 men from the 12 tribes of Israel to be sealed. Once that number is met, then we'll be redeemed. Then we can call on the Lord with one mind, one consent, and then he will hear us from heaven and redeem our people. But until then, nah. <laughs> we, got, we got much work to do. Until then, we got much work to do. Uh, is there any questions? I'm wrapping up the class. Is there any questions? We got patient saints coming up next. Uh, we got any questions? Pertaining to what I've I've gone over today, I'm not answering anything about Adam having belly buttons and none of that stuff. Right. Economics didn't put us in. We didn't go into captivity because we was broke. We went into captivity because we was wicked. We was killing each other, committing adultery, stealing from one another, idolat uh, idolatrous acts. These are the things that got us put in captivity. Okay, no questions? All right. Hey, all praise to the Most High. I'm Officer Naraya. Um, this has been Daily Bread. Always where y'all start y'all's week off right. It's Sunday. Get y'all selves together. Prepare y'all's mind for the week. When you go out into the world, go into your job, go into school, wherever you're going. Get your mind right as you go amongst these wicked uh, other nations and the wicked of our people. You got to be on your toes. You got to be on guard. You got to keep your spirit guarded. All right. So be on uh, be on point. And we finna go. We finna go pull up to your pastor's church right now. We finna go pull up to your pastor's church. All right. It's going down. All right. Shalom.